Math 31, welcome to example five. We're gonna take a look at how to solve this type of exponential equation. And I wanna give exact values for x, meaning I don't want any decimals. And this is gonna take us back to something we talked about way back in section 2.6. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little reference to the side here. All right, see section 2.6. All right, and look at the learning outcome, solving equations in quadratic form. Now, it's been a little while since we did that, so I just want to give you the sections to refer back to. These were specifically examples 6, 7, and 8 that we did this. Okay, actually, let me go ahead and extend my little squiggles. So solving equations in quadratic form, right? So we did this in examples six, seven, and eight. All right, just so you have a reference. All right, but let's, let's revisit this. So this is a U sub, all right? So if, you, if this seems familiar to you, great. And if it doesn't, no problem, we're gonna work on it. So I'm gonna let U be equal to E to the X. Again, if you look back at those examples, you see we always let u be equal to this middle term. I don't have to worry about the constant. I'm gonna let it be equal to this middle term. And then I need to square both sides. So if I square both sides of that equation, oops. When we have a power raised to a power, we're gonna multiply the exponent. So I find out that u squared is e to the two x. So I've got my u sub of e to the x, and by default, or by squaring, really, I get u squared equaling e to the two x. All right, so now let's rewrite this entire equation using u's. We're gonna sub in u's for x. Well, instead of e to the two x, I'm allowed to write u squared. And instead of six e to the x, I'm allowed to write minus six u. And plus five, this has no x's in it, so I'm just gonna keep that as plus five. It's a constant, okay? Now I have an equation in quadratic form, and we have three ways of solving quadratic equations. We can factor, we can complete the square, or we can use a quadratic formula. Now, I like to factor first if I can, and then if I can't, I'll go ahead and I'll typically use the quadratic formula. But this one is nice in that I can factor it. This is u minus 5 times u minus 1 being equal to 0. And through the zero product property, I see that either u minus 5 is equal to 0 or u minus 1 is equal to 0. So I get u is equal to 5 or u is equal to 1. And you might be thinking, sweet, I'm done. Eh, you're not. You started the problem in x's, so you need to end the problem in x's. So we need to now sum back. So that's great that u is 5 and u is one, but what is x equal to? Well, I know u is equal to e to the x, so let me sub back. So here I will get e to the x is equal to five, or e to the x is equal to one. All right, and at this point, I now have an exponential equation. I technically have two of them, but take a look. I have an exponential equation. You see my exponential expression on the left because my variable's up in the exponent, and the bases of these exponential equations are not the same. All right, I have an e over here, I have a five here. I have an e over here, I have a five here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna employ that technique where I log both sides. And I'm gonna opt to take the natural log because the natural log is log base e and I have a base e in my power, right? In my exponential expression. So I'm gonna do ln of e to the x is equal to ln five or, oh gosh, I'm gonna run out of room, keep putting squiggles to separate stuff or, I don't think I can scrunch this in. Let me rewrite this so I just have enough space. Okay, so we'll make this super skinny. So I have ln of e to the x is equal to ln five, or I know that ln of e to the x is equal to the natural log of one. All right, we talked about this in example four. When you have an ln and you have an e, Right? When the base of your logarithm, because this is log base e, and the base of your power are the same, 
the only thing that survives is the exponent. So here I get x is equal to ln5. Same thing here. The base of my logarithm is e. The base of my power is e. The only thing that's going to survive is the exponent. So here I will get x is equal to the natural log of 1. And I'm hoping the natural log of 1 rings a bell. Anytime your argument is 1, you know x is equal to 0. So that means the two answers for my equation are the natural log of 5 and 0. And even though natural log of 5 might look funky, it's just a number, right? If I plug it into my calculator, it looks like it's about 1.6094. All right, and if I were to store that in for x, just so we could check it, I could do e to the 2x minus 6e to the x plus 5, and when I hit enter, it's equal to 0. All right, and I could do the same thing. I could store 1 into, oh no, not 1 into x. What was our other x value? 0, excuse me. 0 into x, and I could run that expression again, and when I hit enter, I still get zero. So both of those solutions are working. Right? If you have time at the end of any exponential equation or when we get there, logarithmic equations, you can always plug these numbers back in and see if the solutions work. All right, so with that, we've now talked about how to solve exponential equations when the bases are the same. We saw that in example one. And then we really spent some time talking about how to solve exponential equations when the bases are not the same. And we did that in examples two, three, four, and five. All right, so we're gonna change gears. We're gonna start solving logarithmic equations next. All right, I will see you in a bit, bye.